Hi guys and welcome to Cooper's Keys. I hope you enjoyed the uh, note by note breakdown that I just did for this song, Blessed Assurance. Um, it was a request by one of the viewers and I thought, you know, normally I take some time, but I just thought if I don't do it now, I probably won't do it. So I did it immediately that I got the request. Um, feel free to send me more requests and I'll have a look at them. I can't guarantee I'll do all of them because I still have a few things planned that I want to cover. Or, or explain so I did a break note no by no breakdown you can slow it down and take your time to learn the song however I just want to quickly explain some of the concepts and give you some tips um, I suggest that if you are learning this song first of all I want to thank the person that played the song I'm not 100% sure who it is it's on the channel uh, Douglas uh, James Douglas but I'm not sure if that's James Douglas or not um, if anybody knows and perhaps you can let me know in the comments below yeah, so um, he plays it in the key of B flat, which I'm sure is the key that the hymn itself is actually written, the original hymn. Um, so he's staying true to that. But I also want to just urge that if you don't know the song, at least the chords and the progression, the melody line, then learn that first, because that will give you the most benefit in looking at someone else's cover or someone else's rendition of it. Because if you know the movements, you know what to expect. You know when it's going to a 2-5-1, where it's going from the 5 to the 1-7 and then leading to the 4. If you know when those things are happening, then you can make sense of what he does as an alternative to what should be done. That way you could add to your library and grow as a musician. So yeah, that's my main recommendation to anyone who's learning the song. Just make sure that you can go through the song. Um, you'll notice that he uses a lot of drop two voices. Yeah. And so that makes it sound somewhat complicated when it's really not. It's uh, if you, if you know your drop two voicings, you could literally play around with those. They they sound they sound great in whatever key you're in. Um, and so that's one of the main things I saw. And of course, um, just doing normal runs and, and arpeggios. Um, standard standard movements in gospel leading up to the one and so forth and so on um, there's there were some uh, definitely some tritones because this is standard gospel you know some of these runs some of these movements are standard gospel so looking at the, your library of gospel licks and runs you should be able to already work out some of these because they're, they're, they're pretty pretty standard but um, they're very well put together thank you for the request like I said, um, I don't want to, since I've already done a breakdown, I'm not going to break it down again. But um, let me just. Grace notes. You'll notice there's a lot of grace notes in there. And this uh, pretty sounding chords when he uses tension. So instead of going, he's um, adding tension and making it sound pretty because tension and release is um, where the melody, you, you, you form an internal melody inside of the song, like like a harmony to the melody sort of thing and it makes it more interesting to listen to. plays a lot on the uh, on the melody as well so that's something you could pick up and add to your vocabulary well this video is running way too long so I think I'm gonna cut it here but if the, you have any more questions about what he's doing or you have any you want any practical advice about understanding the theory behind it then let me know I'll be happy to maybe do another video around it but if the MIDI is enough for you then great have fun I'll see you guys in another video